Hello, welcome to this week's Dividend Cafe. And as we uh, get ready to tape here, it's kind of one of these awkward weeks because there's no real way around it. We want to tell you what's going on right now and kind of get into the week that just was and where things are. But really, it's very likely that by the time you're watching this, a lot of things have moved and shaken and so forth because the House of Representatives is preparing to vote on their counter bill to Obamacare. Uh, whereby essentially they should be voting probably on Friday, uh, March 24th, to repeal Obamacare and replace it with the House's and the Trump administration's replacement. Now, it was supposed to perhaps take place tonight. They've delayed the vote a bit. There's folks coming on TV now saying they have the votes. There's folks saying they don't yet, but they're really close. So there's all this last minute horse trading going on. And, and this shouldn't necessarily lead off what we talk about at Dividend Cafe or be the fundamental story of the markets. And in and of itself, the political nuances around how they end up getting this kind of legislative feat done really isn't that huge of a market story. It's a big political story, a big news story. However, the reason why it's a big market story, the reason why we had a really substantial sell-off on Tuesday of this week in the markets, 220, 230 points, it was our first day in the S&P 500 and the Dow down over 1% in six months, which was one of the longest streaks in history without a 1% drop. So we did have a good down day on Tuesday, and the reason for that, and the reason why this story matters, is that it has a lot to do with the rest of the Trump administration agenda. If indeed they really cannot get this bill through, um, it would seem to indicate a very uh, unempowered White House and a significant amount of division and complexity that would exist amongst the, uh, the moving parts, separation of powers, in DC that could impact the confidence the market has in their ability to legislate and get some of these things done. My personal opinion is that really more likely we um, they're gonna get it done, but you've seen firsthand how complicated that is, how difficult uh, the horse trading that goes on, the back room discussions, conferences, compromises, negotiations. And in this case, it's a really interesting two-headed monster because on one hand, there's been big pushback from what they call the Freedom Caucus, the far more conservative right side of the House, all within the Republican Party. And then there's a lot on the more moderate and centrist side uh, that have certain uh, considerations they want. So they're having to appease two different groups. And, and not to mention the third group, which would be the Democratic Party, that, that is just sort of a given. They're not going to get any votes from any seated Democrats in the, in the House or the Senate, I would imagine. Um, it's possible there might be a couple of defectors. I'd be really surprised. But they don't really need those votes, but that presupposes a very united front in the Republican Party. So to the extent that this is exactly what we've been talking about for months since the election, that we still believe the most pro-growth and bullish parts of the Trump administration platform, tax cuts, repatriation of foreign profits, corporate tax reform, deregulation, we think all those things are highly likely to get done, but none of them are likely to get done easily. You're just seeing a microcosm of that, a sort of poetic symbol of what we're referring to with this Obamacare effort this week. We still believe it happens. By the time you're watching this, maybe it will. But even then, we're only talking about the House vote. It still has to go to the Center for Reconciliation. There's a lot of journey still ahead with this thing before a new bill becomes law. Ultimately, why the market might care about this particular bill, besides what it bodes for future reform efforts, $600 billion of tax cuts. It's a trillion dollars of federal spending coming out of the budget. Um, there's a, a lot of, of pieces to this that are market friendly. As best I can tell, nobody thinks it's a perfect piece of legislation, whether you're on the right, left, Freedom Caucus, centrist, whatever the case may be. But um, overall, I think that some version of this is very close to getting voted in. And ultimately, this is what you should expect. Market volatility throughout the year, 
but headed towards probably successful fulfillment of the expectations the market already has, particularly on corporate tax reform. That's the largest issue that is hanging out there. Frankly, it's one of the reasons why I just can't understand for the life of me why they wouldn't have led with corporate tax reform in their uh, administrative agenda this year. But uh, nobody asked me my opinion. So I'm going to let that go. And I really would love for you to go to DividendCafe.com because I'm not addressing here on the video a lot of other things that we do get into online this week with our written commentary. Um, just looking over the weekly writing, there's some really important material about the Fed funds rate, Fed Reserve raising rates last week and what that means going forward, how exactly loose and easy they are. I have some really good discussion about active versus passive investing and that whole debate. So do, do check that out at uh, DividendCafe.com. I'm going to leave it there for now with the video and reach out to us with any questions and we'll keep you posted uh, as more developments come. Thanks for listening and watching Divin Cafe.